We'll try to keep this thing moving through these tight ends. This is tier 5B. The next part, I'm calling this the floor gang because their floor is pretty darn low. You're really hoping for a touchdown, but they catch <laughs> a couple passes a game. They're all involved in their offenses enough to give you that four or five points a game, which as we mentioned is sadly serviceable at points of the, of the season for tight end. These guys are worth that mid, maybe late second or early third tier down. They go around 13, 14 of the startup. Why get us started with tight end 16 here. Cole Komet can be 24 years old, which is a little bit surprising because he's also entering his fourth year in the NFL. So he's very young for his experience in the NFL. Tight end 11 total points, but tight end 18 in points per game. Not great there, but he did have an 18.3% target share for the year. The problem is, is the Bears offense, right? Like they don't pass the ball. Um, now, I think that they can. I think Justin Fields is a capable passer. Um, there is some discussion about how good of a passer he actually is or can be. Um, I think he can be very good as a, as a passer. I think he's fine right now. I think the issue is that like they had to make our offense like that for it to work because there's there really wasn't anything for him to throw to. I mean, there was Darnell Looney, Cole Komet, and what? There wasn't. You know, uh, they, they were drafting Vels Jones to help him, and then obviously that wasn't going to work out. Um, so I, you know, I think that they're going to try and add to the offense, obviously try and give Justin Fields some pass catchers. I don't know how many they're going to be able to add. I don't know how many free agents are going to want to go to the bears. They may be, they trade for somebody. Um, but I think if they do that, that will also mean that they're going to try and pass more than they have previously or this past year, which could keep Cole Komet's fantasy points alive. His target share might drop as they add some weapons, but if they pass more, it might balance it out a little bit. He was someone that I would really liked. Um, but it, I'm starting to lose a little bit of interest because I'm concerned if he can actually ever be an elite tight end. I, I'm starting to think that that it, that ship has sailed. He's probably going to be good, not great. And what will the offense be passing wise over the next few years? So it's tough. Yeah, with Cole Komet, I still like the player just fine. I just think he's really boring i think I, i'm not sure where the ceiling <laughs> is i don't know what the direction chicago is um, we saw jalen hurts turn into one of the best deep ball passers in the nfl and good enough to be accurate over the middle of the field and sustain a really powerful passing offense i saw Justin fields in college i saw him yeah. throwing deep balls all over big opponents in college if lamar jackson comes serves with his arm why can't Justin Fields? His downfall will not be because he's not a good enough passer. It, he will be let down by coaching in an organization that does not build around him properly for his skill set. I don't think Justin Fields' downfall is going to be his arm talent because certainly mm -hmm. the, the raw tools he has are really, really solid. You can't tell yeah. me that that is the reason he will not succeed in the NFL. There's a lot of other reasons why he could not succeed, um, but about his passing options, this offense is going to have to take a huge step up for Cole Komet to be even Pat Fryermuth, which is what last year we were kind of hoping he would tear yeah. into. Um, this is all about opportunity costs with Cole Komet, right? T tight end 16, I think that's fine. Totally fine. Tight end 2. Yes. When I don't, I'm not sure when you're starting him at points in the season. He over the last two years has just been more of a desperation play, and that could potentially end up a little bit of a roster cloggy type player. Remember when we had a lot of ho high hopes for a little grouping with you love your David and Joku and Evan Ingram not too long ago. Those were that hopeful tier with mm -hmm. guys like Hunter Henry and um, Mike Gesicki. And if you held on to those guys for a little too long, it really never came together um they just they end up being more roster clog type players for your team where none of them are bad football players and with the correct circumstance all of those names could probably end up being guys that you're plugging into your lineups at points in the year i'm afraid cole Komet will fall into that type of player which is why he's down here into the second mini thing of tier five i thought it was unfair to have him a, a whole total tier different than a guy like trey mcbride because there's not there's a non-zero chance that Trey McBride ends up falling back a year from now into this Cole Komet or a little bit lower when he if he doesn't show out in his next season. So just keeping it realistic with Cole Komet, the 18% team target share seemed great. They also had no receiving options. So I'm not going to weigh into that too heavily. Um, yeah, I would like to see a little bit more. At least we got a couple of touchdowns from Cole Komet this year. Uh, talking about high guy we were really excited about who 
turn into a little more what I was saying with that cloggy, maybe you're plugging him in, but it's relatively uninspiring. Next guy in the floor gang is who, Wyatt? Noah Fant, going to be 26 years old, tight end 17 in total points, tight end 22 in points per game. For some reason, Seattle still likes to use Will Disley. <laughs> um, I I don't quite understand it. I think Noah Fant is a much better player than Will Disley. But the fact is, is that he is not getting enough work in his offense to warrant starting on any given week. But it's tough to rank him too low because we know who Noah Fant can be and who he is. He's a hyper-athletic tight end who's capable of really big plays in a, in a given offense. He he was a tight end one before going to Seattle. A low-end tight end one, but he was a tight end one for fantasy. So we know it's there. It's just... I, 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 you know, it's, with this offense, I can't confidently say that he'll, he's going to produce. I just, this is a pure, he the, bet on the player and hope that things work out. I, I think it's a worthwhile shot when, you know, when you talk about cost for Noah Fant here, because he is still young, uh, still athletic, and he could just find himself in a position to produce it at any point. But he is a little bit of a roster clocker because you can't actually play him. So it's a tough investment. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I don't, I'm not completely out on Noah Fant. Uh, it has to be more deep rosters at points in the season. You're going to end up playing Noah Fant. They use Will Disley because he's a completely different tight end to Noah Fant. Noah Fant, his athleticism marks are off the chart, but he's obviously just hasn't put it all together as the best football player. There's more aspects to the game than just being big, fast and strong when it comes to the tight end position. And I think there's a reason Denver fell out of love a little bit with Noah Fant. It's crazy because it feels like just yesterday that Noah Fant or TJ Hawkinson split rooms. And there was a real conversation, not only because of the helmet coming, both coming out of the same university, both going in the first round of the NFL draft. Um, they're completely different players. And Noah Fant was the more exciting one, just given that athletic profile we were talking about. It is disappointing to see him this slow, but I think it's completely appropriate. He was the tight end 17, as you mentioned, in total points in 2022 and he's here at 17 i think that's because his floor is probably right here i'm just unsure how high that ceiling is at least he is still only 26 years old so there's potentially time and seattle they were good offense this year maybe in year two with that team he takes on a little bit more of the role but at best he's the third guy here catching balls in a team that's identity really is going to be through kenneth walker um how, how high can that upside get right yeah. So talk about a guy whose upside is just capped by his role in this offense. I'm rolling right through. This is tight end 18 Dawson Knox, 27 years old. He was a day two guy, just uh, what felt like only a few years ago, but he's coming into the second part of his contract. He was the tight end 14 in 2022, tight end eight in 2021. We have him here at tight end 18, which is below that mark. I think it's because it's all about expectation with Dawson Knox, which is kind of a theme for this floor gang tier. It's fair to say what Dawson Knox is at this point. He's inconsistent. He's touchdown or bust. He's undersized receiving tight end for an offense with a top five NFL quarterback, which is what props him up to relevancy at stretches of the season. But Buffalo desperately needed a second receiving option this year. And Knox was just not that guy. He just didn't step into it. Gabe Davis was spotty as well. He didn't step into that role. They really need a strong, true second receiving option for this team. And they could probably benefit from another tight end in that room too, which might not be a bad thing for Dawson Knox because it could open him up more as a receiver. Um, but he just has a limited ceiling in both situations unless he comes out like he did when he was the tight end finished just a year ago and has an unprecedentedly high or tough to repeat level tight uh, touchdown percentage. There's the word. <laughs> I just don't really see where that ceiling comes from. It's that every year we seem to have a guy like this, Dawson Knox, Robert Tunyon, a guy who's propped up by those touchdowns where I don't think Dawson Knox is a bad player, but I think he's a spot start value tight end as long as he's with Josh Allen uh, his, his, his contract, as we mentioned, he's moved on to the second contract starting next year. He'll likely restructure again. He already has once at points in his career, but he's probably tied to Buffalo through at least 2025. And so is Josh Allen. So you're going to hear Dawson Knox's name for the next couple of years at plenty points. I think he's a fine 
tight end two or three at, just to be on your bench is a guy that you're probably going to play at points of the season. But there's there's no shot that Dawson Knox is a player I'm reaching for, a player I'm really targeting. Maybe in redraft because you're just targeting this offense. Maybe a new OC comes in. They get a second option. You're just looking at total touchdown opportunity for this team. But with Dynasty, we love those target shares. And Dawson Ox is not that guy. I think at the target share is what separates a Cole Komet for me, even though the touchdowns might not be right. there for Cole Komet like they are for Dawson Knox. Uh, I was just going to say, he had his one magical year. It was clearly an outlier, I think, when you look at the rest of his years of his career. And, and he's just kind of living off that. Any value he has is based off that. He's fine otherwise. He's fine. Me. He's frustrating. He's really frustrating. And the partnership you don't want is like him and Noah Fant. I, I was tweeting throughout the season. I had one team where it was almost comical between Noah Fant and Dawson Knox. Because I played Dawson Knox. Noah Fant got a touchdown the next week. Go to Noah Fant. Dawson Knox gets a touchdown. This happened for like four weeks straight until there was. It was week, quite the streak. Maybe week 12 or 13. I don't exactly recall off the top of my head. We both ended up catching a touchdown. I was like, okay, I can't lose this time. Um, but talking about a guy who was popping up all over the place throughout the season. Tight end 19 in this group is Juwan Johnson, 27 years old. This is higher than other people are going to have him. We're sliding him in here. I know Nate on the channel is a fan of Juwan Johnson amongst these types of players. Uh, he was a tight end 11 in 2022. He is a free agent coming up, which is why I'm not going to be pushing his name uh, a lot more. He's similar to Dawson Knox in the fact that he is undersized for the position he's only 230 pounds but he's 6'4 he basically operated as a big wide receiver for the saints this last year where they really lack size in the receiving core um it's tough to ignore him when he had greater than four targets per game in the season and he popped up in spurts throughout 2021 early in the season it's pretty athletic uh, he's also relatively capped. There's no ceiling with this player. But when you're talking the third tight end on your team, I think Juwan Johnson's a little sneaky buy because you're getting him here. We're talking, uh, this is rounds 13 through 15. He slides past that. Uh, some of your drafts, he might be there. You might be looking down around 18, 19, 20, and you'll see Juwan Johnson's name in that range where it's a pretty dead group. You're grabbing the KJ Osborne's of the world. The Even that's pretty high for that range. Uh, I think Juwan Johnson's a very, very looked over name, uh, potentially roster cloggy, but depending on your depth at tight end, I think he's a very fine ad. You also don't know what the future looks like for him. If he does stay with New Orleans or without a first round pick, it's a really weak wide receiver free agency class. We don't know what's going on with Michael Thomas. Jarvis Landry might be completely dust. Uh, there could be a role for this guy. Again, there's uncertainty with the team QB, the offense as a whole, and the direction of the organization. But there's, there's likely a uh, small little value here when he's tight end 24, 25 in market. He goes like round 18, 19. So I think that's a good little uh, inefficiency there to grab Juwan Johnson. Yeah, he's, he's a good bet to make because if he does get a contract somewhere that they want to use him, you know, as they're starting tight end, like he's he's going to be a value based on where you can draft him. Yeah. He's also a legend because I had a matchup against Wyatt where he was the Monday night game. I forget who they were playing the Saints, but it was completely done. The game was toast. And with I think maybe his time expired, Juwan Johnson caught a completely meaningless like 20 yard touchdown and that put me to beat Wyatt in a matchup and oh, oh I bet you guys could imagine I was graceful about that one <laughs> all right Thanks for guys. Bringing it up. oh every chance I get every chance I get 